Hello everyone and welcome back to part 11 of the Pokemon Red No Starter Run. When we last left off, we just finished the fucking... Well, we didn't finish anything. <laughs> uh, we started um, doing that. Oh fuck, I just kicked something. Um, we just started doing the SSN shit. Um, and we're pretty much done. We just have, I think, this last person to fight out here on the um, deck. I think that was the word I was looking for last part. I said poop deck. Poop deck, deck, same thing. Um, but yeah, we, I think this this guy this guy's the last. If not, there's another guy. And then that's the deck portion. And then um, we just have to the right um, of the deck, once we come out of, you know, once we go back in the boat, there are a couple doors. Um, well, meh. There's more... Eh, I think there might be just as much as the basement. Um... But I don't think there's as much trainers, because, you know, not every room has a trainer, but... Um, after that, we'll be fighting, um, our rival Blue, uh, and then finally to the captain. And we get cut and get out of here. Um, so we shouldn't be in the SSN for too long. Um, because, I mean, like I said, this part, we're gonna finish it, and also fight Lieutenant Surge and beat him, so... We're gonna be getting a lot of shit done in this part, that's, that's good. But as you can see, it is the deck if you see the water. Um, it's just kind of funny because if you see the sprite of the actual boat when you before you enter it, it's like small as shit. It's like maybe a, like two of your characters <laughs> combined. Um, but then when you're on the deck, it seems like it's fucking huge. Um, but eh, what can you do? That's just, I guess, graphical sprite limitation shit, but... Yeah. If you talk to this guy, he'll show you Snorlax, which is actually the Pokemon who is blocking us on Route 12. Um, Snorlax, uh, what can I say about Snorlax? Um, he's good in Smash Bros because he usually kills people because of how big he is. Um, but now he's he's known to be more of a tank Pokemon. Um, in Gen 1, I think he has high defense, but that might be it. I know in uh, Gen 2 onward, I think he has high defense and special defense, pretty much making him, like I said, a tank. Um, so hey, I mean, I don't, I would pr definitely recommend using him uh, if you're looking for a tank Pokemon. I know uh, Red, when you fight Red in Gold and Silver, he actually, I think he uses a Snorlax. Um, but yeah, so if you want to go ahead and Snorlax, use it, go ahead. Um, I'm not sure if I might. I might use him just to try him out, but I don't know if I'll keep him. But, um, the thing with Snorlax, though, is it's kind of, uh, I guess you could say rare. There are only two in the whole game, because you can't find them really, well, I guess randomly, like in a random encounter in the grass. You, they're only at those two spots where he's sleeping, and you have to wake him up with said item, which said item is Poke Flute, which we won't get for a while. Um... But yeah, there are only two. Um, well, and in order to advance with the game, you you have to at least get rid of one of them. But yeah, you only have two chances of getting them, so you know, make it count. Um, but yeah, so we just have a couple more people to fight, and that'll be that. Uh, as you can see here, Mankey's not doing a good job, so I got put in Geo, dude. Um, and this is pretty much how I'm gonna be handling. Um, uh, Lieutenant Surge, just dig, 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 dig away. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, that's that's good. So Geodude leveled up. Um, and there's that gentleman, and we're going to get a shit ton of money. Wow. I think that was the most we've gotten so far. So there's Max Ether. I think it either restores, like, all your PP for one move, or, um, like, maybe 5 or 10 PP for all your moves, something like that. Um... Like I said, ethers, I don't really use them. They're only in situations where I can't get to a Pokemon Center or I don't feel like going to a Pokemon Center. Um, but ethers, you can't, you can't ever buy, I don't think you can buy them. So, meh. I always hold on to them just in case. I never really sell them, regardless if I use them or not. But that's just me. You can do whatever you want. Um. <laughs> But yeah, so I need something to talk about while these battles are going on. So I guess I could talk about um, uh, the color scheme. Yeah, uh, the color palettes for this game. Uh, this game is kind of special in regards to color palettes. Um, as you see here, I'm, I'm using just the, the regular Game Boy palette, which is just the black and white. Um, this is what it would look like if you played it on a regular Game Boy 
and or Game Boy Pocket, I think it was called. I never owned one. My first was the Game Boy Color. Um, except it wouldn't look so white because, you know, it only looks white because of emulation and screen and computer has light, whereas a Game Boy, you know, it's dark, and if you ever played on one, you know, you know what I'm talking about. There's no backlight, so pretty much everything looks gray. I couldn't really imagine playing on that, but still, that's how it was done back then. So yeah, there's the original palette, which is what I'm using just for sake of originality, I suppose. That and my emulator is kind of picky when it comes to changing the palette. For some reason, I can't figure it out, but... Um, so there's that. Uh, if you plug this thing into a Super Game Boy, which is an adaption or, or adapter for uh, the Super Nintendo, which pretty much lets you play Game Boy games on your Super Nintendo. If uh, I'd, I'd assume most people are more familiar with how you can play Game Boy Advance games on your GameCube via that Game Boy Player that you would attach on the bottom of the GameCube. It's pretty much the same idea. Um, if you were to play uh, red or blue on that thing, it would give it the same color palette that uh, yellow would uh, defaultly have, which is, there are colors to everything, but it's just like one color. Like Pikachu right here would be pretty much all yellow. Um, and Geodude would pretty much all be, uh, like a black, brown, kind of gray, weird color. <laughs> um, but, uh, so there's that. And then also, if you plug it into a Game Boy Color, um, it has color, hopefully, because, I mean, false advertisement if it doesn't. <laughs> um, but it's kind of weird. It's like only one said color palette, like... Most characters will be green, like, um, like for red, its default is, it's, it's default color scheme is red and green. All the Pokemon and like all the environments will be red, but then like all the characters, like your character, will be like green and shit. Um, but you could also change them if you if you screw around with it enough. Like uh, when you start up, it will say Game Boy. If you ever turn on a Game Boy. <laughs> um, and if you move like the directional buttons in combinations with A or B, you could change the color scheme to different color palettes. I know there's like a pink and yellow one. There's a default uh, black and white one if you want to play that. Stuff like that. I think there's a blue and red one. That's the default for a uh, blue version. Um, so, if you're ever bored, you can mess around with that. It's kind of fun to do. I've done that before to see all the color palettes I can get. Of course, I don't remember all, like, which buttons you have to press to get which color palettes, but screw around with it if you're bored, if you can, if you still have your old Game Boy in red and blue. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, the reason why I can't really change the color palette for this is because, like I said, the emulator, it's weird. Like, you could change the color palette, but I'll click it and it won't change the color palette, so I'll be like, okay, fuck yourself. For those who are curious, I'm using uh, an emulator called TGB Duel. It's just a regular Game Boy Color. Um, the the special thing about it though is that it lets you to, it lets you trade um, with a different save file. It's kind of complicated on how it works, but um, if I ever wanted to trade, I could. Uh, of course, it's only for Game Boy Color, so you can't really use it for Game Boy Advance games because you know the most common emulator in form of Game Boy is the Visual Boy Advance. So I would assume that's what most people thought I was using at first, but. Nope, I only like using that for Game Boy, or Game Boy Advance. If I use it for Game Boy, it would be kind of more difficult to get the um, aspect ratio that I want. Um, so I just use the Game Boy Color since it's already in the aspect ratio that a Game Boy Color would be. So, there's that for the, the curious people who wonder about, hmm, what emulator does he use? But yeah, I guess that was enough to talk about to kill some time, because we're fighting Blue, and we pretty much I <laughs> just beat him. Um, so yeah, his team is pretty much the same thing, except a little bit tougher, a little bit, you know, higher leveled, his Squirtle evolved, but in all, the only thing that could give you trouble is the Kadabra, but um, like I said, just try to use a Pokemon that has high attack, because or Kadabra has low defense, so... And here's the captain, here's this room, and like I said, he was sick. He's, I guess, puking in the garbage can. All he had to do was rub-a-dub-dub, and now he's good. Uh, don't ask me. <laughs> um, but yeah, because he's so grateful to us for helping him, he's given us uh, HMO1 cut. Um, so HMs, I think I've touched base 
upon like TMs because we've gotten a lot already, but the one thing that's different about HMs is in order to use it on the field, you have to have a certain badge. Like in order to use Cut, we needed to get uh, Misty's badge. Um, and in order to use like Flash, we needed to get Brock's badge and shit like that. Um, so you need a certain badge in order to use it off the field. You could still use it in battle, but you can't use it off, you know, off battle. Um, and the moves are permanent. So once you teach Cut to your Pokemon, like I just did to Farfetch'd, he's gonna learn that forever. And because there is no such thing as a move deleter in Gen 1, um, yeah, he pretty much is gonna learn it forever. You can never get rid of it, so that kind of sucks. But yeah, here's um, the SSN departing. Unfortunately, we won't see her again. This is it. So yeah, it's, it's I guess kind of a somber feeling just because it's like, damn it, I can never go back. But oh well, <laughs> you get over it. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you ever try to go back, he'll just say, you know, the boat's left, sorry Charlie, and then throw you out. Well, it won't really throw you, but you'll be kicked out, so. So there's that. The SSN's done, we got all we needed. Um, and now we can go to the gym, because yeah, I, we need cut in order to get to the gym. You could also surf around uh, the edges in order to get to the gym, uh, but we don't know surf yet, and we don't, I don't even think we can use it until, like, fucking the fourth or fifth badge, so yeah, just that's the only way you can get to here. You need cut. So now that we got cut, we could go fight Lieutenant Surge. Um but yeah, I was gonna talk about fucking something I can't remember about the cut. Um oh yeah, what I think of HMs in general. I I don't really like HMs at all. Um HMs like cut, it's just a glorified scratch, nothing special. HMs like Flash can go suck a dick because they suck. All it does is kind of lower your opponent's accuracy because I guess they can't see because you flashed. Um, but I don't know. It never works for me. I mean, I've tried to use Pidgey Sand Attack. They always fucking hit. They never miss. But when it, you know, when they do it on me, I always fucking miss. So whatever. I don't even waste my time. So I hate TMs like or HMs like Flash. Strengths okay. Uh, Surf is a pretty good one, but, and then Fly is also okay, but still, I've never really liked HMs. I don't like how they're permanent. I mean, yeah, later gens, you could get rid of them via move deleter, but you gotta go to the move deleter, and eh, I'd rather just them not be permanent whatsoever. I mean, the HM's infinite as well, so you never, you know, most TMs are one-time use until Gen 5, where they make TMs unlimited, but... Uh, HMs are unlimited, so you could use them whenever. Um, you don't have to worry about like losing it, you know. So why not just have the move deletable, so that way, you know, you're like, okay, I don't want Cut anymore. I'll teach it to a different Pokemon, get rid of Cut on this Pokemon, and then teach it to a different Pokemon. There you go. So I don't understand why they're not fucking uh, deletable, but whatever. They still aren't. They, you know, up to up till now, we're in fucking Gen 6, and they're still not deletable. You have to go to move deleter in order to get rid of it, which, in my opinion, kind of sucks. It's the only really reason for a move deleter in the first place, just to get rid of HMs. So instead of having to program a move deleter, why not just make uh, HMs deletable? I don't know. It seems it seems better. It seems easier for them and better for us. So I don't see why not. But whatever. Um, so yeah, here's uh, Lieutenant Surge's gym. Uh, it's obviously electric type, like I've been talking about a bajillion times, so if you got a ground Pokemon, there you go, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, like I said, the reason why I like Geodude above all other Pokemon, like the other options like Diglett and Sandshrew, well one, I can't get Sandshrew because this is red, <laughs> and two, because he's also got the rock typing, so if they do stuff like Tackle, nope, nope don't do anything. See, if that were on a Diglett, I mean, I don't think it would do too much damage because it's Tackle. Tackle's kind of a weak move, but it would still do a, a decent amount. But, yeah, you don't really have to worry about um, getting hurt with Geodude here. Except for shit like Sonic Boom, because I don't understand. It's normal type and it hurts them, and I don't get it. Ugh, but whatever. Just dig, dig, dig. Unfortunately, Dig only has 10 PP, so... Use Dig to take out all these three trainers, and then go back to the Pokemon Center, heal, and boom. 
take on the 10 surge. And yeah, Geodude's evolving. I actually thought he evolved a later level, like 28 or something, but nope, 25. And we got a Graveler. It's funny because uh, later on in his other sprites, he's supposed to have, I think, a two set of arms and then legs, but in here it looks like he just has two set of arms. And I guess he uses the other set of arms for legs, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, Graveler is a pretty awesome Pokemon. Unfortunately, the two Pokemon that are, like, are my main that I'm using right now, the Graveler and Kadabra, in order to get to their next evolutions, you have to evolve them via trade. Um, and that's just one of those things that I guess was tr you know, trying to push trading with other people. If you want a Golem, if you want a Alakazam, you gotta trade. Um, so I might uh, show off um, how to trade with a, t a TGB duel in order to evolve them. Um, but... Uh, yeah, that, that'll be later on. I still want to check their moveset on Bulbapedia to see if I'm missing anything. Or maybe if, they're, if they learn their better levels, um, or their better levels, their better moves um, at earlier levels if I don't evolve them, and then evolve them after that. But that's that, that's for me to worry about, and you guys just to watch. <laughs> um, but yeah, the gimmick to this gym, oh god, this, this gym is a pain in the dick. And it's infamous amongst the fan base because... Um, there's there's these three rows of trash cans. You have to search through every trash can and look for a switch. Once you press the switch, it will unlock the first lock. The second switch for the second lock is usually right next to the um, the one you just found. Unfortunately, it doesn't say what you know. You don't know if it's to the left, to the right, above, below. You don't know. It's just next to it. So you have to kind of get lucky here and find the second switch. Um, and what also thinks it's always randomized, so if you mess up like I just did earlier and, you know, hit the wrong one for the second switch, the whole thing will restart, uh, the first switch will be randomized again, you gotta go find it. Um, so it's just a pain in the dick and a lot of people hate it and it takes forever and blah, no one likes it. But yeah, there we go, I finally got it, although it didn't take me too long, it's taken me a lot longer, trust me, but... Yeah, the, the, this is one of the most... It's probably the most annoying gimmick to uh, the gym and the whole gen. Um, but, uh, yeah, once you do that, Lieutenant Surge. Um, I think he has three Pokemon? Yeah, three Pokemon. I know in yellow, I think he only has one, his Raichu, but I think his Raichu's like level 30 or something ridiculous. Um, so, eh. Like I said, Graveler, if you got a Diglett... Um, I think Diglett might even evolve into Doug Trio at level 25, but yep. The main thing is just Dig. Even if you don't want, if you don't want Graveler, if you don't want Diglett, Doug Trio, if you don't want Sandshrew, or if you can't get Sandshrew, then even just teach Dig the team you got earlier to um, a Pokemon with high attack, and you should be good enough. I remember I would just teach Charmeleon sometimes, and it would be good enough. Um, of course, I'd rather go for the stab bonus, you know, teach it to a ground Pokemon, so that way, you know, it does more damage, but... Oh, and here's Raichu. I guess I was wrong. It's only 24. <laughs> what did I say? Uh, 25 to 29? I guess I was wrong, but whatever. Um, so if you did all this stuff, if you battled all the trainers on Route uh, 11, battled all the trainers on Route... or not Route, um, SSN, then uh, this gym, like, like for me, it should be, you know, no problem. Um, with the badge he just gave us, we can now use Fly outside of battle. Um, I was talking about that earlier, but uh, Fly is an HM we won't get till the fourth badge. So I'll talk about Fly and how it works once we get it. But um, there's that. And uh, he also gave us the TM24, uh, which is Thunderbolt, one of my favorite electric moves of all time. Um, it's an awesome move. I think it does like 80 damage, has 100 accuracy, I think like 15 PP. It's real good. As soon as I decide on one electric type Pokemon I want, I'm teaching that to it, so I'm holding on to it till then. Um, because, you know, I'm not going to be using Pikachu. Still haven't decided what I want, too. But, um, I'll figure that all out when we get there. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Lieutenant Surge defeated. We have three badges, and all is good in the world. Uh, like I said, I think last part, um, next part we'll be continuing on and getting all this shit, 
Uh, like I said, we won't be getting another badge for a long time, but whatever. You got to do stuff like that because, yeah, I don't know. So anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next part. Take care.